So sometimes it can be a pain to match footage from different cameras and that could be a process that you even dread. But in today's video, I'll show you how you can match your footage from different cameras using Adobe's color management system to make this process a little bit easier. There is also a trick that you can use, but a bit more on that in a bit. So Premiere had a huge overhaul of how they work with color and the, how they manage their color. You're now able to edit your videos, color correct and color grade your videos in a wide gamut working color space mainly the ACES CCT, which is industry standard. And this is huge because that means that you're able to now take advantage of all that information in your log or rock clips to be able to extract all the dynamic range that you can. At the time of the making of this video though, this is still in Premiere Pro beta, but in a few months from now, or you're watching this much later in the future, this may already be rolled out for you in the regular version of Premiere Pro. If you have no idea about what this new color management system in Premiere Pro entails, I have made a video that can answer your question. That video will be linked below or somewhere here. And if you're mainly editing your videos in DaVinci Resolve and want to find out how to color match footage from different cameras in that software, I've also made a video about how to do that as well. You can find it in the description below. So before you even press record, one thing that's going to save you a ton of time when you're color correcting your footage in post is to have the proper white balance. And in the case of using different cameras is having that white balance match directly from the get go. It's going to save you a ton of time. So I'm here in Premiere Pro and I have three clips, one shot in Sony S-Log3, one in Canon, 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 one in Canon C-Log3, and one in Apple Log. Under the metric color, go to settings and you're able to select color, manage auto detected log and raw media. And this is just going to automatically detect your log foot footage and convert that to the working color space that you have. So you can see that my S-Log3, C-Log3 have now been converted. However, there is one minor inconvenience. Apparently Apple Log at the time of this video, it's not recognized as log for some reason. So this is where I'm gonna have to manually go and override that. So this is how to do that. So with these same settings open, you can go to override media color space and select Apple Log. And this override that auto detection and you see that this has been converted from log. By default, you may have direct Rec 709 selected. We, if you have that, make sure you change that to white gamut tone mapped. And that is going to change your color space from Rec 709 to a working color space in ACES CCT. And this is going to make it a lot easier for you to color match and color grade your footage because you'll be able to work with a wider dynamic range from that locked footage. So there are a few things you want to address or keep in mind when you're color matching footage. The first one is white balance and then contrast, skin tones, and the last one is are there any colors that are more prominent or the scene or that pop out a little bit more. I also have LUTs if you like, so leave links in the description to some of the ones that I've worked on, so feel free to check them out. Before I even do anything, I actually like to have my Lumetri scopes open right here. If you can find them, you can go to window and go to Lumetri scopes. I like to have these ones selected. So waveform, I like to have the Luma one, which is this one right here. I like to have the RGB parade, which is this, and the, ve the vector scope. Another trick for you when you're matching footage is that you can go to color wheels and match and you can click on comparison view. This is going to open another screen right here for you to compare your clips. You can also access that via this plus sign right here and right there, comparison view. You can drag it down here and now you'll have easy access to that. So looking at the three clips, I want to match everything to the main clip, the center clip. So that's the Sony S-Log3 clip. So I'm gonna go to the Canon lock clip right here and this will be the current clip, the one that I'm working on, and the reference clip will be this one right here, the Sony S-Log3. So the first thing I'll do is work on that white balance. So I go to basic correction and try to look at the RGB parade, and you can try to match those colors so that they're 
closer in that same level. So if you can see, if I drag it all the way to the left, that's how those values are affected. So this part right here, this half part of each of these colors represent the clip on the right side, which is the one that I'm working on. And then the other half of that spectrum represents the reference clip. So I'm just going to give it a little bit of a of an adjustment right here, maybe about there. And because the white balance was very well matched during shooting this clip, I don't have to do too much in terms of white balancing this shot. And then I'll do tint, I'll work a little bit on that, and we'll try to bring these values just a tiny bit closer to each other. 2.4 minus 2.4 or something like that. So next I can go and play with that contrast. I will increase that contrast just to match this clip a tiny bit more. And you can see how this was stretched a tiny bit as I did that, the waveform. Okay, that's good. And I think I'll increase the shadows just by a tiny bit. Next, I'll go to color wheels and match. And here I will pull down the midtones with this button here just a tiny bit. And as you can see, all the midtones here were pulled down a little bit more. And this is just to match this after everything is color match. You can also go and color grade all of this footage to give it a look that you want. So let's close that down. What I'll do next is go under curves and play with the hue versus hue curves right here. I'll click on this eyedropper and select my face. And these dots have been added. So any color that is in between here is going to be adjusted. So I'm just going to Maybe increase that just a tiny bit so it's a little bit more on the red-ish side to match that first clip, just a tiny bit. Next, what I'm going to do is to look at the more prominent colors in the scene, which I think, in my opinion, are is the, uh, the window here in the background. So what I'm going to do is, again, go on the eyedropper tool, select the sky, and lower this just a tiny bit. Next, I think I'll play with the Luma, the Hue versus Luma curve. So I will click on that sky again, and I will lower down the brightness. So Luma stands for brightness. Lower down that brightness for this right there. And we're getting there. I think the next thing I can do is Hue versus Saturation, which means that you're able to adjust the saturation of a particular color. So let's go and click there again. And I will bring that saturation up just a tiny bit, just like that. Okay, I can do further adjustments. I can spend more time and get this to be even more perfect, but let's move on for now. So the next thing we're going to do is match this iPhone clip. The white balance on this one is not as accurate as you can see. So there is one thing you could try to do, one trick that works sometimes, but not all the time. We'll see if it works in this occasion. Let's toggle down the color wheels and match panel. And with face detection check mark, you can select apply match. So Premiere Pro is going to try its best to apply the match to the current clip based on that reference clip. So let's see what happens. So it applied a match, but it may, yeah, not digging this. So it didn't do a great job. So let's undo that. Let's do this manually. So first, again, we'll go back to white balance, basic correction. So let's move this first one here to warm it up just a tiny bit. So maybe about this much. And then let's go here and try to balance it out a tiny bit. Okay, that's looking a little bit better. Let's see, before and after, just a tiny bit. Next, we'll play around with that contrast. So the contrast on phone footage is usually a little bit on the heavy side. So let's reduce that a tiny bit. And as you can see here, when I reduce it, everything matches a little bit more. Next, we'll go under color wheels and match. And I think I'm just gonna pull these midtones just up just a tiny bit. Yeah. What I'm going to do next is I'm going to adjust the color of the shadows here. And if I do an extreme, you can see what happens to the RGB parade. So you can get an idea of what's happening. So what I'm trying to do is just give it a bit of a touch of a cool hue here. Okay, and then midtones. I think I can probably cool it off just a tiny bit as well. And the highlights, I'll cool them off as well. So we're getting kind of close. Next, we'll go under curves and play with the skin tone. So I'll go into hue versus hue, click on my face right there. And I'll bring this 
down a bit and next I think I can go and adjust some of the saturation make that pop a little bit more and I cannot go too far with this iPhone clip as you can see here if I go too far on any adjustment the clip starts to fall apart really quickly so you want to just give it a touch of an edit there next what I'll do is go to hue versus hue eyedropper click on that window again and make sure that that hue is sort of similar to that one on the reference clip go under hue and saturation click on that again i'll give it a bit of a pop of saturation there and also lower that brightness of the window maybe a little bit more of a saturation okay it's close enough so all clips are somewhat match i can go further and do more tweaks as well but this is the basis on how you can color match footage in premiere pro using some of these tools in the lumetri panel okay one more thing you can do if you want to dial in those skin tones let's create a color mat okay drag that on top of your clips let's cut them appropriately to each clip select a circle here and then we'll invert that mask hone in on the face now when you go into your lumetri scopes you're able to see that we're close to that skin line the skin tone line which is the color of blood well not red but like human skin tones hard to explain but regardless of the color of your skin the skin tones will always lie on this side in the vector scope closer to this line which is the skin tone line let's actually delete that and just duplicate this one this color mat and go to the effect controls and let's move that mask to my face right here let's make that a little bit smaller and go into the metric scopes and you can see that this is perfectly on the skin tone line let's see if we have that same thing with the iphone clip and when you go to scopes again this is pretty accurate so skin tones are good this is it this is how you're able to color match your footage in premiere pro if you learned something new and you enjoyed this video let me know in the comments below and if you haven't subscribed and you're still watching greatly appreciate it if you subscribe and here are a couple more videos you could watch next and i'll see you there